If your goal is to increase your one rep max strength in the pronated grip pull-up and you have room in your program to incorporate variations of the pull-up, then this video is for you. Today, I'm going to be ranking the 10 best pull-up variations that you can incorporate into your program from least effective to most effective. So let's get started. The 10th variation on this list, meaning the least effective variation, is the close grip pull-up. So the close grip pronated grip pull-up. One of the only pros that this variation has is that there is a heavy bicep emphasis. Uh, so if you wanted to do some bicep work but wanted to still do a pronated grip pull-up for whatever reason, then you can use this variation because the elbows get full flexion. But one of the cons of this is that you cannot get to lockout. So you can only really go up to where your elbows get fully flexed uh, anymore. And it's really hard to get uh, your chin to the bar. So that's one of the cons. Uh, another con is that this is hardly if ever used in practice. I have not seen a single street lifter ever use this variation in practice and probably for good reason too. So it's probably tried out and it's probably not very effective. Another con is that when you're trying to use this variation in order to address the biceps, I personally think that there's a lot more efficient methods to go about it. Uh, such as using the chin-up variation instead, which I'll talk about later, or even just doing isolating exercises like the bicep curl. I'm of the opinion that if you wanted to use this specific variation for your problem of emphasizing the biceps, I personally think that the pronated grip bicep curl is a better way to do this than using a pronated grip close grip pull-up. So take that as you will. Number nine on this list is the wide grip pull-up. So the wide grip pull-up, what I mean by this is that you are establishing a grip width that is wider than what you normally would use. So there are street lifters that have a pretty decent wide grip on their pull-up already. Uh, but when you want to use a wide grip pull-up, you're trying to go beyond that. So one of the only pros that this variation uh, is good for is that it's very useful for finishing work, uh, maybe using it as a last exercise, whether you want to just do body weight sets to failure. You can do this for endurance work. I've seen a lot of endurance athletes use this variation just to hammer out a lot more volume and cardio. But there's many cons to this variation. Uh, one of the biggest cons is that it's highly inefficient for weighted pull-ups because a wide grip pull-up is almost like an isolating exercise for the lats, uh, specifically the side of the lats. Like you're emphasizing a very specific portion of the lat muscles in a wide grip. And because of this, uh, you're working more back width than anything else. You're trying to increase the width of your back more so than the biceps and more so than the back thickness. And in a weighted pull-up, the back width is not that useful as compared to the back thickness, in my opinion, and even the biceps. And this, this variation is tackling a very small contributor to the regular variation of the weighted pull-up. So it's almost like tertiary work. It's not really that useful to work on. It's like a stabilizer muscle almost that you're working, which is what I'm referring to as the back width. Um, another con is that you are very prone to shoulder impingement uh, because you are reducing the subacromial space between the humerus bone and the acromion. Basically what that means in layman's terms is that when you're going for a wide grip pull-up, you're increasing the chances of your arm and shoulder bones to touch each other. When they touch each other, it can be really uncomfortable and painful, and that friction there can cause a lot of pain and it could actually induce an injury which will set you back. So that's one of the risks behind this variation. And honestly, this 
injury risk could be further heightened or amplified if you add weight to it. So that's why a lot of people, I never really see anyone other than one specific street lifter, Mika Scholz, use this, use this variation uh, with a good amount of weight on it. Now, this leads me into my next con, which is that the variation is hardly used in practice. So, like I said before, Mika Scholz is the only street lifter I know of that would use the wide grip weighted pull-up, but I'm almost positive that he's not doing it for the purposes of one rep max strength training, but rather for bodybuilding purposes. Not even for hypertrophy work that aids in one rep max training, but just purely for aesthetics. And the wide grip pull-up definitely does a good job at that. So that's number nine on this list. Number eight on this list is none other than the one arm pull-up. So the one arm pull-up is essentially just pulling yourself up with one arm. One of the best pros of this variation is that there is a good amount of carryover. Uh, if you look at the top one arm pull-up specialists, they have a very good weighted pull-up and chin-up without even training for it. Andre Alexandrov, one of the best one arm pull-up specialists right now, has a 100 kilo pull-up by two reps, and Dawe Sama from France has at least a 90 kilo chin up, and there's no video footage of it, he might have deleted it, but it's still really strong. Some would argue that that is an elite number as well. Another pro behind this variation is that you have the ability to overload one arm to a significant degree. One of the best things about this variation that no two-handed pull-up can ever uh, mimic is the ability to overload that arm. When you're doing a one-arm pull-up, you are able to allocate all of your CNS into just that one arm, thereby generating more power from one arm. Thus, the one-arm pull-up, what it's so good at is it's able to generate more stimulus from one arm as compared to the weighted pull-up and generate its stimulus from one arm. If that makes sense, then this is due to the bilateral deficit where essentially the power of two arms combined is less than the power of each individual arm combined, if that makes any sense. Another pro behind this variation is that you could use it for imbalance fixes because you know it's one arm, so you can definitely uh, customize the volume for each arm in order to address that issue. Although I would rather use unilateral isolating movements for this just because it's so much easier. And this leads me into my next con, which is that it's very hard to create volume out of this unless you're doing it assisted. So the one arm pull up can be very taxing and because it's so taxing, you can't get a lot of reps out of it. And that's why if you wanted to address your imbalances, you would need a lot more volume than less than five reps. So in that case, I would just rather use the unilateral lat pull down, for example, to address that issue. Another con is that the one arm pull up has a completely different movement pattern to the weighted pull up. Both movements have completely different uh, things going on with each other, especially when you account for the lateral rotation that occurs during the one-arm pull-up, whereas in the weighted pull-up, you're not really rotating. You're just facing one direction. Another con is that the carryover uh, between the one-arm pull-up and the weighted pull-up can only be fully realized if you're really good at the one-arm pull-up, and this can take many years to get a good base for the one arm pull up in order to realize it through the weighted pull up. And the last con is that hypertrophy uh, is not really evident in this variation, basically meaning that if you're trying to do hypertrophy work, uh, the one arm pull up probably wouldn't be your first uh, option to go for because when I look at these one arm pull up specialists, they don't bulk, they're not trying to gain muscle out of it. In fact, you're trying to stay as lean as possible uh, because for the one-arm pull-up especially, 
body weight is a huge factor as compared to just the weighted uh, two-handed pull-up. So hypertrophy is not really a good option. And that's why, you know, for all of these reasons here, that's why the one arm pull-up is number eight on my list. Number seven is the negative pull-up or the eccentric pull-up where you're essentially starting from the top of the pull-up immediately and then slowly lowering yourself down. This is number seven on my list. One of the best pros behind this variation is that it stimulates hypertrophy like no other. It is the best for stimulating hypertrophy due to the eccentric contraction. It's a well-known, well-accepted scientific hypothesis that any eccentric contraction that is extended over a period of time will stimulate hypertrophy better than if it wasn't extended over a period of time. So it's highly beneficial for people who are in a hypertrophy block and just want to um, build size in order to realize that size later on. One of the biggest cons though um, is that it's not very common in street lifting. It's not very commonly used. I've only seen two people from France, Coach Vegeta and Ludo, use this variation in order to increase their one rep max strength for their pronated grip variation. Another reason is that the eccentric portion of just regular volume sets could actually just be enough to induce hypertrophy. You don't really need a variation to uh, tackle hypertrophy when your regular variations already induce it because you are dropping down and pulling yourself back up. Like you're still involving the eccentric portion of the pull-up in these sets. So that's probably enough for um, this variation not to be needed. And so for the following reasons, that's why this one is number seven on the list. So number six, uh, but also could be number five, and I'll get to that, is the neutral grip pull-up. So the neutral grip is essentially when your palms are facing each other and you do a pull-up in this type of grip. So one of the best pros of this variation is that you're working the muscles at different joint angles. And the good thing behind this is that you can deload the muscles used in the joint angle of the main variation. So if you're trying to deload on pronated grip pull-ups, maybe you'll switch to neutral grip on a lighter load and thereby you deload uh, this variation while this one gets strengthened. Uh, this is a very useful variation for a conjugate method system in which you're constantly rotating the variations weekly. It's also the strongest compound variation. If you're able to become a specialist in the neutral grip pull-up, uh, you will have high carry over to pronated grip pull-up, no doubt. Uh, the bicep and lat activation beats the chin up uh, according to EMG data. So the neutral grip is definitely a good, it's a solid variation. Some of the cons though behind it is that it doesn't tackle any specific sticking points or attributes of the pronated grip variation like explosivity or speed. This variation is just really used for overall pulling strength. Also, the setups are not always available. Some people are just working with a horizontal pull-up bar. Another thing behind this variation is that I've only seen two street lifters. Uh, one of them you wouldn't really consider a street lifter, but I've only seen two of them use this variation, and that is Valerio Naldi from Italy and Alpha Destiny or Alex Leonidas uses variation and it makes sense for Alex to use it because he follows the conjugate method system so it makes a lot of sense but Valerio Naldi I would like to get his input more on why he uses neutral grip and he does have a really strong pronated grip pull up it's 112.5 I believe so he's definitely doing something right in, in terms of incorporating the neutral grip into his program. The next one on the list, um, again, this could either be number five or number six, just like the neutral grip pull-up, is the supinated grip pull-up or the chin-up. Uh, one of the pros is that you get to deload the muscles that are used for the pronated grip. So it's 
very similar to the neutral grip in terms of just being able to deload the muscles at the specific joint angle um, that you use for the main variation. So maybe you could switch to chin-ups during a deload week, for example. Uh, it's really useful for strengthening biceps, which plays a major role in the top portion of the pull-up. Um, just like the neutral grip, though, neutral grip also strengthens the biceps, but chin-up definitely strengthens the biceps. So if you wanted to do some bicep work uh, and just emphasize that, you can use the chin-up. Also useful for a conjugate method system, just like the neutral grip pull-up. So there's a lot of similarities in terms of the pros between the chin-up and neutral grip. One of the cons of this grip is that the grip is often unfamiliar and uncomfortable to pronated grip pullers. So this is really from an experience standpoint, but also some other street lifters I talked to have this same problem where if they are a pronated grip specialist um, and then they want to switch to supinated, they find the supinated grip to be very awkward and uncomfortable. Like they can't even do it and their strength is just not the same. Like they need a good amount of sessions to be able to get used to the feeling of it. So uh, the next con is that you get uh, some injury risk because in a supinated grip, there's a lot of rotation in the shoulders and just like the wide grip pull-up, there's a chance of a shoulder impingement. You could potentially make certain bones in your shoulder joints touch each other, uh, which is never a good thing. And just like the neutral grip pull-up, one of the cons behind this variation is that it doesn't tackle any specific sticking points or attributes of the pronated grip variation. So you're not really working on specific things like explosivity or speed, etc. It's just used for overall pulling strength. And again, this is for the purpose of increasing your one rep max in the pronated grip pulling uh, variation. Another con and the last con is that there are very few pronated grip specialists that use this variation. So uh, the few people that I know of that would use the chin up to improve their pronated grip pull up is Bald Omni Man. He's a huge proponent of this. Uh, he lists this variation of switching the grips as an S tier accessory exercise. There's other people like Matthew Zlat who would switch to chin ups, but in my opinion, this is probably not for the purpose of improving your pronated grip pull up, but rather just to improve the chin up, uh, just to compete in other competitions. So we don't really see a lot of pronated grip pull up specialists like Pierre Cole or Ludo using the supinated version of it. So that's number five or number six in this list. Number four is the chest to bar pull-ups. So chest to bar is essentially just you're in a pronated grip and you pull the bar up to your chest. I put this as number four for most effective variations. One of the best pros behind this variation is it works on your explosivity and speed like no other. You're gonna need a strong starting position in order to do a chest to bar pull up. And this variation works very well for that. Uh, because of this, it's also a good finisher. So just like the wide grip pull up, you can use this variation as a finisher for your pulling days. Definitely not a bad idea. One of the cons behind this variation though, is that there's just a lot of range of motion. So I look at this variation as like an ATG squat, an Astagrass squat. Basically, if you strengthening this range of motion will not be as useful compared to someone strengthening the range of motion that they want to compete in. Like there are no competitions where, you're ha where you have to get your chest to the bar, not yet at least. So therefore, why would you ever train for a variation in which you're trying to uh, go more than that? Powerlifters, I rarely see them training ATG squats. They're only going to be training parallel squats. So it's very similar here. Um, another con is that this variation, in my opinion, is not really suited optimally for just the one rep max pronated grip pull-up. 
it's more suited for someone who wants to increase that, but also increase their weighted muscle up as well. I think the chest to bar pull up is like a good hybrid between the pronated grip and the weighted muscle up. You get the best of both worlds in this kind of variation. So if you have the goal of increasing your weighted muscle up, this is definitely not a bad idea to implement. It's probably the best variation to implement if you have those two goals. But for this specific list of just increasing your one rep max in weighted pull-ups, this is number four on my list. Number three on my list is the banded or chained pull-ups. So essentially you're putting a band and tying it to like a dumbbell or a plate on the floor, and then you put the other end on your belt and then you do a pull up with it. This implies basically that the higher you pull up, the harder the rep becomes. And this is really useful for several reasons. One of the best reasons is that you get a lot of top positioning work. So your top portion of your pull up gets stronger. It's great for speed work and it's also great for explosive work as well. You get a lot of explosivity and like overall athletic pulling strength out of using this variation. And the other pro behind this is that it's very useful for low rep ranges or high rep ranges, whatever you wanna use. One of the cons behind this is that it's not very often used. I don't see a lot of guys using this. There's only a few guys I know of, uh, David Scott, who uses bands heavily, uh, Alpha Destiny as well uses this, and uh, Mech Animal uses bands, and then certain French guys also use bands. So it's not something that just isn't used at all. There's some street lifters that actually uh, implement this into the program, and it's an integral part of the program. Another con is that the setup can defer based on where the band is placed on the ground, which can impact pulling path and mess up the rep. So I used to train with bands uh, back in the day when I was a beginner. The way I would place the band on the ground could be different on each day. So it's sort of not mimicking the exact stimulus that I want from each session. So this could actually be a slight con. Uh, because of this, and depending on how resistant the band is, the band can impact your pulling path. It might pull you forward, it might pull you backwards, uh, but it could definitely mess up your rep. So you have to be very uh, considerate about where you're placing the band on the ground and the amount of resistance that is on that band. So this is number three on my list. Number two on my list is the mid-pause pull-up. Now, mid-pause pull-up is definitely my favorite variation to use. Uh, there are several pros behind this. One of the best pronated grip pull-up specialists uh, actually invented this, Pierre Cole. And to me, at least, he's one of the best uh, weighted pullers out there. And it's used very frequently among street lifters. So you know this variation has credibility to it when a lot of street lifters, especially at the elite level, are using this. Uh, the reason it's so good is because you're essentially making the top portion, the hardest portion of the pull-up uh, harder by pausing right before you lock out. And when you lock out, you're essentially negating all that momentum that you got from the starting position and almost starting fresh here. And this can basically strengthen your top positioning really well, and it can help you overcome that sticking point that you might have in your weighted pull-up. Another pro is that it has great flexibility as far as the degree of difficulty that you want it to be, just based on how long you are pausing at the middle portion of the rep. So if you want to pause, I've seen Pierre Cole pause for like 10 seconds, which is a crazy amount at the mid portion at a certain weight, and then he'll go back up. Uh, crazy, crazy stuff. So you can do three seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds. It's really up to you. But you can also progressively overload in this way by uh, counting how long you stay in the mid portion. One of the biggest cons behind this variation and just pull-ups in general 
is that it's pretty hard to work on specific sticking points in the pull-up uh, because the pull-ups are much harder to grind out compared to almost any other exercise. Like I can't grind out a weighted pull-up compared to a squat or a dip or a bench, right? It's either a hit or a miss for uh, most of these reps. And so because of that, you can't really just stop at the mid portion and then slowly work your way back up. Like you, you're going to get uh, progressively weaker the higher you go because your muscles are much more contracted near the top portion of the rep. So it's gonna be a lot harder to work through that if you lose your momentum from the middle portion of that rep. So you have to be careful of that. Another con is that this variation is highly fatiguing. And so because it's highly fatiguing, it's really only useful for low rep ranges. So maybe sets of five or less, that is what this variation could be useful for. Of course you can go higher than that, but I think for maximum effectiveness, you don't want to do volume work with this type of variation. You want to do this more so for strength work. So keep that in mind. Number one on my list is the topped paused pull-up or the locked pull-up. Essentially, when you get to the top portion of the pull-up in the regular variation, you're going to hold a temporary hold or pause or chin plant, whatever you want to call it, and stay there. Now, there's many pros to this variation. The first one being that the top position has worked very well especially when you're not resting the chin on the bar. Uh, so you get a lot of top positioning work through this isometric hold, sort of, and you strengthen that weak portion, in a sense. Uh, you could use this as your main variation as well. A lot of competitions feature the paused variation of the pull-up. So you can even treat this as a main lift, and you'll still be fine whether it's paused or not paused. The third con is that there are many athletes that use this. Almost every street lifter that's gonna do a variation is going to include this variation into their program. Uh, another great pro to this is the flexibility that it has with in combination with other variations. You could say this for all other variations as well, uh, but specifically with the top pause pull up, you could do a combination of top paused to mid pause back to top paused, and you get a lot of top portion work. You could even do banded locked pull ups, and those are very taxing uh, on the CNS. So, overall, this is a really good pro that works through weak points and strengthens the weakest portions of the rep to a really good degree. The only con that I could really think of is that it's just highly fatiguing. So you can't really use this for high rep sets. Uh, you can only use this for low rep sets. Although you could make it work, uh, but the weight would have to be significantly lower because a top paused pull up is going to take away a lot of your energy compared to regular pull ups. So. That's pretty much all I had, folks. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a long video. And again, if you want, you can combine different kinds of variations. For example, you could use a banded pull-up, combine it with a mid-pause pull-up, for example. Whatever the case may be, just understand that these pros and cons can then defer when you're combining these different variations. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you all in the next one